remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook, back with you once again, and the sequester has been the talk of Washington this week. It's been the talk of all the news shows this week, and you have people all over the place painting grim tales of what will happen if these supposed spending cuts are allowed to go through. Never minding that there's not any actual spending cuts coming up, it's just reductions in what we thought we were going to spend. We're going to spend a little bit less than we were. But people are positioning it as though this will just be the most horrific thing ever for the economy, giving all kinds of, of horror stories of just what all is going to happen. You know, I, I, I've, I'm looking at all this, and, and i got to say something here. And, and this, what I'm about to say, sure, it's going to piss off a lot of liberals, but this is going to piss off a lot of Republicans, too. I'm, I'm going to get grief from both sides on this one. The more I think about this, the more I look at this, I'm starting to think, bring on the sequester. Bring it on. And here's why I say that. There are some people who would tell you, there are many people who would tell you, that if these spending cuts go through, it will have a damaging effect on the, on the economy. That if these spending cuts, supposed spending cuts go through, that there will be people who lose jobs. People who work for the government currently who will lose jobs or be forced to reduce hours or, or whatnot. Well, yeah, that, that's probably true to a degree. We might disagree on to the extent to which that'll happen, but I will acknowledge that there likely will be some kind of negative effect in the short term if that happens. But then I really think about it, and I think, you know what? If that happens, which it's likely to, if there is a negative economic result of this, then what does that actually tell us? What does that negative economic result tell us? If I think about it, what it tells me what the fact that spending cuts will have a significant effect on the economy tells me is that for the last several decades, for the last century actually, we as a nation have wrapped way too much of our economy up in the public sector. In other words, the fact that this might have a negative effect on the economy should tell us that we never should have placed so many of our economic eggs in the public sector basket to begin with. And as tough as that might be to, to think about, or as difficult as that certainly will be for some people to go through, let's not forget, over the last several years of this economic downturn, there's a lot of people in the private sector who have lost jobs, or who have had to reduce hours, or have had to you know, make do with a little bit less because of the economic situation. Why should the public sector be immune from that? Why should the public sector, who I would argue gives us far less of value than the private sector does, why should they be isolated from that? You know, what it tells me is that at the end of the day, maybe a lot of the resources that we're currently devoting towards the public sector, which includes resources of human beings, human resources, maybe a lot of those resources would be better used and more efficiently used in the private sector. And by making these cuts, maybe some of those resources will then be opened up for the private sector to use them. Sure, there's a few, very few things that we need government to do, but not nearly as many as we actually ask them to execute. Do we really need a, a government to provide education, or could that better be done by the private sector? Do we really need a Head Start program, which by its own definition gives an unfair advantage to certain members of society at the expense of other members? Surely not. It's not, not like everybody can go through Head Start. You can't. You've got to be below a certain income level to even go for that program. Well, if that's the case, that's discriminatory. Do we really need to prop up a discriminatory federal program like that? No, I don't think we do. People say it'll impact food inspection. Do we really need the government to undertake food inspection? Or could that be done by the private sector? Something like a, something similar to a better business bureau. Could they do the same thing? When you actually sit and think about it, there are very few things that we truly need a government to do. That a government is uniquely qualified to do that the private sector could not. There's very few things. So that tells me that if we're devoting resources to the public sector to execute those things, that by definition, we are inefficiently using our resources. Things are costing us more than they would otherwise. Now, if we make these cuts, will some people in the government lose their jobs and, or, or at the very least have to reduce hours and so forth? Yes, that's probably the case. But I'll tell you this, I sure as hell am not in the mood to spend my tax dollars to prop up the jobs of people who give me nothing in return. 
I'd rather those people go to the private sector, prove to me that they can provide something of value, and then I will spend money on them. You know what? I'm not real happy with all the cuts that are going to come down with this sequester if it goes through. Certainly cuts in defense are ludicrous. I have no problem seeking out waste in the Defense Department and getting rid of that, but cutting the defense budget, that's a bad idea. Some of the other cuts are bad ideas, but at the end of the day, we do need to cut spending. We do need to cut government. And you know what? Maybe, just maybe, as bad as this sequester might be and as bad as some of the cuts might be, maybe it's better than nothing. Maybe we're at least starting the process that we've needed to go through for a half century or better. I don't like all the cuts any more than you do. But we got to start cutting something. We need to start cutting not only spending, but cutting government. The biggest problem we have as a nation, bar none, is that for the last century, we have borrowed a lot of money we did not have to fund a government we largely did not need. And the biggest, the biggest fear of the Democrats in this, and, and they've hinted at this a little bit the last couple of weeks, the biggest fear some of them have is that once these sequester cuts go into place, maybe, just maybe, people will, will sit and realize after a week or two, hey, wait, my life is not appreciably worse after these cuts than it was beforehand. And then maybe you think, hey, maybe I don't need so much government in my life. It's what we conservatives have been telling you all along. Maybe it needs to be demonstrated. So if so, bring on the sequester. Imperfect as it is, start cutting something. And then we can go to the next level after that. That's it for this time. This is America's evil genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.